Welcome to the Fox and Blake Show. Today we're going to talk about the latest big hit Netflix movie. Kevin Hart, Little Man on Big Campus. We nope. watched. Is that not? Nope. I watched that whole movie. We're going to talk about Annihilation. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Fox and Blake Show. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. We're going to pick something very specific to talk about. We're going to talk about the new movie Annihilation, which is out on Netflix if you live anywhere else in the world besides America. And if you're in America, it might still be out in the cinema there. It's in the I'm cinema. Sure. Go, go, maybe go see it. But it's an interesting book that we both read and it's an interesting movie that we both saw. And so we thought we'd, we'd mash the two of them together and see what we thought. So if you haven't seen it, if you haven't go seen watch it, it, come back. Yeah, if you haven't seen the movie, you mm. should watch the movie. And if you haven't read the book, that's fine. I mean, the book is just these words printed on paper that kind of go in a different direction to the movie, so you should still be okay to watch this. Yeah. But we should say we're probably just probably just going to go very spoiler heavy on this. This is a spoiler heavy filled episode. I'm very sad inside. Is that what? Oh. That is not a spoiler to anyone who knows George. Uh, um, but a lot so, of people know that new fun episode. If you're back, if you've seen the movie, you might enjoy this. Still, even then. <laughs> But we're going to do it. We're going to do Welcome it. Welcome to the episode, Fox and Blake Show. Go to the movies. Okay, you can, oh. you can do that now. <laughs> so, George, uh, you have read the book and seen the movie. What did you think? Let's give a, let's give a quick up top brief overview of what you thought about the two. Mm, which one do you want to go for first? Movie. 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 I liked the movie. It was its own thing. It was very different from the book. I thought it was real fun. I very much enjoyed Alex Garland's last movie, which was... Ex Machina. Ex Machina. Which uh, was a fun movie title to say. Mm -hmm. Two tickets for Ex Machina, please. And, they, and the guy was like, oh, what are you, what are you the uh, robot? Are you, you the robot over here? You want to go see Sex Machine? And you're like, No. I have, I, I am, I'm a very, I'm a very oh. forward-thinking person who does not enjoy films called Sex Machine. I think I saw Sex Machine. Oh. I don't think I saw Ex Machina. It actually probably has three quarters of the same plot. Is Ron Jeremy in Ex Machina? No. I did not see Ex Machina. Oh. But you got to see Ron Jeremy uh, in like some sort of cyborg uh, uh, pleasure machine, which... No, I think no? I watched the movie Heat. He's in the background. <laughs> He's in Ghostbusters. He's in Ghostbusters. He's like pointing up, going like that's his yeah. biggest credit. Even Bill Murray was like, "This is too much," and I'm a yeah. sex addict. <laughs> thanks, thanks to all the cannabis, apparently. Uh, I thought it was just seeing people covered in that foamy stuff. Then he's like, "I'm into it. Mm. That's my thing. What am I into?" See, that's people don't try to talk about kinks on the internet. You want to talk about real difficult kink to get away? I was a young man, and, and a lady said. What kink? Cho choose your kink. Choose the form of the destructor. Choose your kink. And like I it was... tried to think of nothing. And then oh, yeah. it just popped in there. Marshmallow Man. And that's my kink now. I'm into the Marshmallow Man. It just popped in there. All right. You... Sailors in town. Marshmallows. That's my thing. I enjoy good Ghostbusters riff more than the next person. <laughs> more than the next person. We know you're not enjoying this. Annihilation. I really enjoyed the movie. What did you think about it? I enjoyed it. Mm. I mean, I was very, very pro Ex Machina. I thought it was like, it was for me, like it was, the, it's a, no spoilers for the movie, but it's sort of like, it's about, it's, it's sort of like takes the sort of like Frankenstein myth and mm. again kind of posits it in this way of like male nerd culture, like the way mm. men kind of interact and kind of view women. I thought, you know, I thought that was a very, it was a very interesting dynamic. It was yeah. lusciously filmed. It kind of challenges. It very much challenges the idea, of, who, idea. You know, of like, of, uh, of your Mark Zuckerberg type, just yeah. to broadly label it. It challenges the idea of a, of a, of a white knight mm. persona, which you see a lot in movies. Which I have had. Yeah. Who that, is, who's who? the good guy here? Who's really... What crimes are we ignoring? It's not because me? the script hasn't raised them to us. It's the kind of film where you go, "Oh, the script didn't tell me that that person was maybe good or bad." But now I have to think about it. When I think about it, yeah, uh, kind of. And I'm enjoying thinking about it. And so yeah. I was looking forward to Annihilation. I was looking forward to Annihilation so much that uh, when I found out it was based on books, and those books were like described as uh, weird, weird 
sci-fi are they or weird oh. fantasy they're called weird something something like, weird fant weird weird fant oh it's not weird fant i'm wrong about that because that's either a disturbing baby mm. or a terrible flavor of fanta yeah not nah, too fizzy too fizzy and it's like what is this uh papaya <laughs> too, too fizzy that's just the baby so Annihilation is a movie where Natalie Portman, uh, her uh, weird-accented uh, husband, disappeared a year and a half ago or so. He comes so. in and goes like, hey, I'm uh, just, not an just, alien. Just be having a glass of water. Could I have a glass of water with you? Could I have? Sugar. I want sugar water. Sugar water. Give me sugar water. It's basically Men in Black. Give me sugar In water. It's the beginning of Men in Black stretched out to an hour and a half, which mm. is, I, if they did that for every 10 minutes of Men in Black, we would never need yeah. to make another film. And at no point does anyone say, ha ha, that's what I call a close encounter, which I think is needed for any movie with aliens it in it. It's mandatory at this point. Um, and so she, I can see my battery's about to fucking die as well. So the movie Annihilation is about Natalie Portman, who is a sad scientist whose weird talking to husband has disappeared uh, about a mm. year and a half ago. Yeah, in yeah. the past. And now he's, as she's trying to move on with her life, he suddenly turns up again, but he's very ill. And she discovers that the place that he's been this whole time mm. is some secret area called Area X, mm. which I guess is something's going on. And that's what the whole movie kind of is, exploring what's going on inside that space. And that's my ideal setup for a film or a story is mm. where you don't really know what's going to happen and then the rules of the reality get played out, like kind of get explained to you as you go along. And you you find out uh, how uh, the world has become inverted. And mm. that, that's, that's my jam. That's great. Love and, it. And, and I mean we were speaking about the book. The book very much starts with everything's inside of this weird bubble of the mm. shimmer or or the border, whatever you want to call it, this little place. And the thing the book does that, that I really enjoyed, because you've speaking about what you liked about the movie, yeah. I, the thing that I really enjoyed about the book is just how brave it is in doing weird stuff, like bizarre in, stuff. Bizarre so, stuff and not like explaining it to you straight mm. away. Like a biologist explaining to you a weird thing in a way a biologist would but that doesn't really make sense to you, mm. but you understand how bizarre and weird it is because the character is so terrified and freaked out and finds it so bizarre. In the movie and the book, she joins she joins up with this organization mm. uh, called Southern Reach. Southern Reach, and she goes into the, the area, Area X, to find out a way to kind of cure her uh, weird, her weird husband. Cure her weird husband Cure. in the movie and in the book to try and understand what her husband went through. Yeah. What happened to him? Where did he go? Why did he have a second phone? Who were all those texts to? This is not in the thing. This is more like in general of trying to like... You're, people have been like, reading, reading a lot into it. You were watching Breaking Bad. That's a different... Mm, I like to watch things with two TVs on at the same time in case news happens. One so. Netflix account though. So that's great. I mean, I got two profiles. One for when I'm happy and one when I'm sad. Oh. Um, Try to sort that out of algorithms. You have two. One says Damon and one says George. Oh, I'm the sad one. You're the sad one. I'm this the is, sad one. This is really... Oh, our video series is just an elaborate psychosexual play where I, uh, I record both of our parts separately and then use uh, tech wizardry to merge the two videos together. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed the, the movie and the book for very different reasons. I spoke about what I liked about the book. Is there anything you enjoyed about the book? The book itself, uh, I just really liked the overall sense of dread. I liked the sense of reality being upended. Mm. It reminded me in some ways of like playing Half-Life, the game where you didn't, like like something has happened, like a, something has happened to create there's, a rift in reality. There's a dimensional rift mm. and creatures from another universe or another dimension have come into ours. Yep. And it's that kind of thing of like, you have no frame of reference for mm. what these things can do or are capable of. And it's filled, it fills you with dread and it fills you with terror. Like a, like a Lovecraftian house on the borderlands sort of feeling. Mm. Um, and in the movie... I, Someone reads books. I like it. I got a Kindle. In the movie, I liked the beginning, this, like when they go into the shimmer and they see the land. 
And then just, I felt that all the weirdness and all the way in the book, you start doubting who you are and you start doubting why you are there. I felt like... You start doubting the narrator that's telling you things. Mm. You start to think, how much of this is true? I just felt like in the, in the, in the, in the movie, it went to, it just, it sort of felt very ex machina towards the end about like, uh, whereas ex machina dealt with the idea of like, what is what makes a person if some if a robot could be a person very similarly annihilation talked about what makes a person in terms of dna Mm. or even just what makes a human being whether that be consciousness to the decisions they make the desire to keep going memory the desire to self-destruct all of these things impulses kind of it felt very reflective of ex machina Mm. and i think that was less satisfying having been so into the themes of the first film. Yeah. And then to see that kind of like replicated again. You kind of feel like after the first film, after Ex Machina, you're like, I'm done. You did that story. And to see it reflected again, sometimes with movies is great to see someone's earlier work reflected in something else. But a lot of uh, this movie talks about that space that they're in, Area X being like a prism that takes stuff that looks familiar and changes it and alters it in ways that that are interesting and some not interesting and and some ways confusing. And I feel like that's very true. This movie kind of reflected a lot of Ex Machina and Mm. some of the story beats and some of the ideas just kind of got reflected in a way that if you hadn't seen Ex Machina, I think you'd love this movie. But if you've read the book... If you've read the book and seen Ex Machina... You're in a weird position. You're not going to be like as astounded with it as a result. Which is like... Which is what happens when you're very into something already. Yeah, I feel like it's one of those things where you're going to be disappointed that it's not closer to the book. And I think you're also going to be disappointed that it's too close to what Ex Machina was doing. So it's just a weird kind of, you're getting pulled in two different directions in terms of what you want. Mm, Which is perhaps what it was meant to feel like. Who knows? Maybe we're the Natalie Portmans. Maybe. Maybe. I wish I'd seen the movie first. And I would have to agree with that. Uh, my stomach is about to make a noise. I can feel it. This is... And then it's, it's done. A lot of people, Sorry. when they review movies, kind of review them with their brain. But George is one of those my gut, gut reaction my people. My gut reaction. And his gut reaction is like, no, I have a say in this too. Mm-hmm. And it's, say, it's saying, yeah, it happened. Yeah, check out my gut react videos where I watch the Infinity War trailer and my tummy goes... Like, uh, you know, the best way to defeat Thanos is with Pepto Bismol. He looks like a bottle, bottle of Pepto Bismol. He does, so he does. Look at that. Be fun. But I, I do agree with you. I wish I'd seen the movie first because the movie kind of does its own thing. It's very much an inspired by story with the basic concept and kind of it tells a story, not to spoil anything for people. But we have, well, we, we're spoiling shit anyway. It's a story of self-destruction in, uh, in the Annihilation movie, which isn't really what the book is about. I feel the book is on different themes and different characters. And as great as the movie Annihilation is on its own terms... It was a bit of a disappointment not to see the story and the characters and a lot of the beats that I got very excited about seeing in the movie and on the big screen while reading the book. The director has described it as be, as wanting to write. He read the book and then he never reread it because he wanted the film to feel like the memory of a dream. And I think that is true. Mm. But again, I've read the book and I probably, you know, and I've read the next two books, which he did not read and thus did not realize he was a racist by casting Natalie Portman in the main role. That's a real thing that happened. People were very annoyed. People were very annoyed because in the second book, I think she says that she has like high cheekbones as someone who has Asian heritage would have. Um, And then they made the movie and obviously Natalie Portman is uh, like queen, queen of the white people. Queen of the white people. Queen Amidala. Natalie Portman. Queen Amidala. You're queen of the white people. Queen, queen Amidala, who was so white that they put extra white makeup on her face just so that everyone was aware that she was really not like the queen, yeah. queen Cajun. Queen Amidala, who died at the start of the second movie when her thing, her ship blew up, but then walked on screen again because it was a double because, hey... There's just a million white women. There's just so many white women out there. There's so many white women who... who, Did they change the actress? I can't tell the difference. 
It was Kira Knightley. Was it Kira Knightley? It was originally Kira Knightley. Originally Kira Knightley, who you're saying is different? Mm, not saying that. I, that's a different person? I mean, we all loved Natalie Portman in Bend Like Beckham, and since then... So good. ...have just followed her career up and up and up. I loved her in Les Miserables. A great movie. Great guy. If you watch this far, you have seen the movie. Would I say read the books? Absolutely. I'm mm, saying this as someone who's that. read all three books. Uh, uh, that the second book really kind of takes you with a different character, really builds on what's happening, and the third one brings us two things to get the two first two books into together in a way yeah. that I felt was satisfying. If you watched the movie, you know that it kind of ends very definitively. Uh, I would say with the books, the books kind of feel like a start, middle, and end of like one giant book, mm. and because uh, they they also get sold as one giant book in many places. Yeah, so it is worth reading the three of them together. And if you enjoyed the movie, and you're like, I would have loved to find out more about that place. I would have loved to have heard more of what else was going on or what else would come from that place. That's a great way to do this because you're not getting a sequel. Alex Garland says he's like, nah, nah, I don't do sequels. Not for me. Uh, no Sex Machine two. Um, so I saw Sex Machine too, though. Oh, really? Well, Jeremy was in. He's again. again. He is in the background, though. Oh, I've preferred the book. Those were our thoughts on the film Annihilation, the book Annihilation, and then our own sense of uh, our belief in our own opinions hmm. being annihilated. Completely. I have no faith. I think. I think maybe I hated the book now and actually loved the movie. Or maybe I don't love anything. Or maybe maybe I've never loved anything. Mm, it's hard to tell. But mm. thank you for watching it this far. Uh, we are, of course, going to be back next week or, or sooner with another episode where we'll just have a bit of a riff on whatever's on in our Different lives. Different topics. Or if you enjoyed us talking about movies, nerdy stuff, and pop culture stuff, let us know. Maybe we'll do this again. Actually, that's a good idea. Um, I am someone who uh, loves to be alone but what i hate doing is coming up with ideas so mm. if you have an idea please let us know uh probably in a comment this is not some sort of lame leave a comment or whatever genuinely smash that follow button that's twitter this is the wrong one this Damn is the it. wrong one but Damn if there is something you would like us to talk about or cover that is let's say not facts related oh i'm not interested anymore but if you are one of the three people that still are Please let us oh, know. I'm one of the three people. Oh, man. you're back. Now that it's part of an exclusive group, I'm on board. Oh, you're into it. Okay. I'm number four. What should we talk about next time? Because again, would love to know because... Uh, I'd like to talk about the things that you want to talk about. Because I just so come up with ideas gorgeous. and then George agrees. And really, it's just, it's 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 a filter. It's the, it's the filter bubble. You figured it out there. Me agreeing. That gets shit done. Follow us up next time where we will talk about George agreeing with everything. So... Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and as always, please remember to stay hydrated.